Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone um, to our study session this evening. Today is September 8th, 2021, and we will be um, starting our, our meeting tonight with a study session, and we will be doing a marketing update. Terry Locke, our Director of Community Relations, will be presenting um, an update to our marketing plan. Thank Mr. you, Madam Locke. President, members of the board. It's our pleasure to present a uh, rundown of our digital marketing campaign that wrapped up right at the first day of school. Uh, we've executed digital marketing campaigns the last four or five years through Cox Communication, but this year we wanted to ramp it up. We wanted to elevate our game in the digital marketing era, so we, uh, we did that. and. Uh, we partnered with uh, First Strategic Communications, one of our great partners, and their partner uh, off Madison Avenue. And we're gonna share some of the results of that tonight with you. But first I wanna introduce you to Sam Incorbaya. She's our first ever digital marketing coordinator. She is homegrown, a 2013 Basha High School grad. She also graduated from ASU and has four years of experience in the digital marketing world. So she's just, she's been with us for about a month, hit the ground running, has been a fabulous addition to our department. So. We're gonna move through here. Um, first of all, this one here? Yeah. We're gonna go through tonight uh, the following things, the campaign items. Uh, I'm gonna run through slides three through 16. I want you to see the digital, uh, see the uh, imagery, and we're gonna, I'm gonna have Sam get into all the analytics later. She'll be kind of the, um, get through all the details uh, from her experience and so forth. And we're gonna show you how we're doing in each of these categories, including the results, and then some future recommendations and we're gonna follow up with the We Are Chandler Unified new marketing campaign that we just began today, actually. First video went out today. So first, what we're gonna talk about is the prospecting campaign. Now, the prospecting campaign is for people with no history with Chandler Unified. There's no digital history. They haven't come to our website or anything else, and we're trying to fish them in. It's, like, it's, a, it's a hard sell, a uh, cold sell, and that's, that's what it looks like. So this is what the, the first few slides are gonna look at. We're gonna show you what it looks like. So we went with a whole child uh, approach because there's some, plenty of schools that do a lot of good things uh, in certain areas. We like to think we're really good at a lot of things, not only great academics, but counseling and physical education and um, athletics and so forth. You're gonna see that in these slides as well. So our digital banner ads, this is what some of them look like. You'll see the, we focus on whole education, whole child education. To the far right, we focus on opportunity. Next, uh, we focus on whole child potential. Uh, next, we focus on whole uh, child growth. So we'll go back one, I'm sorry. I went oh, yeah. back. So basically, over a span of about two months, you're gonna see all these different combinations of ads. So something might attract you um, to one of them that didn't the other one. So we, for two months, we went through, and we're gonna share the data in a few minutes with you. Um, we, we bombarded our community with this kind of messaging. Our Facebook ads look a little bit like this. Uh, we focus on whole child education because there's no single way to grow, no single way to learn. And that's, that's really our approach in Chandler Unified. We have a, a school of choice for pretty much any learning um, behavior. Um, and then again, the prospecting education, opportunity, potential, growth. So those are just rotating around and uh, online. And we're gonna show you the results in a few minutes. Instagram ads. Uh, Instagram is our youngest audience. We have a lot of kids on Instagram, and some of our youngest parents are as well. And again, you see the, the language, the education opportunity, potential, and growth included here as well. Uh, prospecting on Facebook and Instagram video ads. Let's go ahead and show you one of the videos. <clears throat> So we supplied all the all the images, the uh, video, and so forth. Mike Holland and his team plugged into this, but there's a number of videos we wanted to show you, give you a look at one of those. Uh, Gmail ads. If you, anybody has Gmail ads, Gmail. Well, you get ads on Gmail, don't you? And so this is what you look at here again: the whole child education. We're consistent, and the potential, uh, and then uh, creating engaged learners, smart and well-rounded. That's what we want our Chandler Unified people to be: smart and well-rounded. Not, not a single focus where you're at a school to do one thing in particular a school is good at. We like to think that we're, we're good at a lot of things, have a lot of smart kids. 
Now, we're going to all points media, um, we focus on the whole edu child education. You'll have buttons to click, including go to whole child to learn more, enroll today. We love that button, obviously. Uh, we focus on the whole child education. And you're going to see this is a different layout you have, depending on where on your screen, where you're surfing around, and where you're going to approach that. Uh, and next is the retargeting campaign. It's different than the first one. Retargeting campaign goes after people who have some history with us. They may have attended our schools, but at a minimum, they have a digital history with. They've come to our website, but we haven't captured them. So there's a, there's a slight difference in what the approach. We went with the A plus in all of our approaches on these. So Chandler schools make the grade A plus in STEM, A plus in language immersion. Again, you see the different sizes. There, there are videos and, and static ads as well. Uh, digital banner ads, music and sports are another ones. A plus in music. We're the number one rated district in the Valley, A plus in music, A plus in sports, see happy kids, good imagery and so forth. And some Facebook ads, uh, again, a retargeting group, bring these people back in. Our A, plus rated, our A plus rated school district provides whole child education and wide range of academic choices. Again, A plus rated for arts and STEM, sports and teams, traditional and classic, music and clubs. And so you're gonna get this just hitting you for two months solid. Okay, and uh, on Instagram, very similar approach. Again, it's a, uh, a younger audience, and it's uh, you want a little bit less language in those. So it's more about the imagery, the videos, and the, and the photos. Um, that's what that looks like. Single image in a carousel. Uh, Gmail adds images again. Um, we make the grade A plus in STEM, A plus in language immersion, A plus in music, and some other data. The whole idea is to show a picture and a sentence or two on Instagram and get you to take the, take the bite. The executive summary of this, before I turn this over to uh, our superstar Sam here. Um, so we spent $50,000 on this campaign. It, get, it earned us 4.4 million impressions and 10,856 clicks. Um, that's what $50,000 gets you. And we did that over a two month span. And uh, Sam's gonna take us through some of the data. Yep, absolutely. So then um, you'll start to see the same three boxes up at the top for the next few slides, just for reference. But then uh, what we want you to know about this slide is that the, um, this gives you a layout of like the Google search and discovery campaign results. So the education industry average for a click-through rate, um, and it's specifically for search campaigns, is about 3.78% and 0.53% for discovery campaigns. Quick difference between those is that discovery are specifically for people who are open to learning like new things, so they're not necessarily seeking out CUSD, but they're interested in like similar areas, whereas search, you're specifically searching for CUSD. Um, so that's a quick difference there. Uh, but then it also says here our enrollment campaign sits at about 5.58% above the industry discovery average, which is really cool, because then that means that more people are discovering us somewhere. And so here, we also wanted to talk about our search audience that we received results on. So with Google's junior high search, um, that was actually the most popular result for us, which was really cool. Um, and Google search was divided into different keywords that were related to audiences based on the ages of the families. So that could include families with like preschool age children, kindergarten, elementary, and junior high. And our theory is that it's because people are searching for those specific areas since it's a transitional time for those families. It's a big deal. You know, if your students weren't in school before, then you might be investigating preschool opportunities. Maybe your students in elementary school and you're looking at your different junior high options, so you're searching for that more. Um, that's just kind of our theory there. And so specifically with the stats on those, uh, the junior high search audience received the highest click-through rate at about 10.44%, but kindergarten wasn't that far behind with 10.42% on that click-through rate. And so here we also have results for our paid social ads, and it's overwhelmingly um, positive for Facebook specifically. And so that's where we find that most of our audiences are on. They're on Facebook more so than Instagram, since those are the two we compared. Um, and so with here specifically, it says our paid social ads showed noticeably higher click-through rates, and that you could even see the engagement difference there. Um, we've received a 0.48% click-through rate and uh, about 2,000 post engagements compared to about 1,000 for the retargeting audience. So you know, back to what Terry was mentioning, uh, with the prospecting audience, those are people who are prospective families. Maybe they don't know about us just yet, and then the retargeting are the ones we're trying to refocus them on our CUSD initiatives and, and everything that we're about. 
And then here with the Gridway group, um, they specifically looked at like key behavioral and zip code trends that would be important for us for future marketing. Um, so here you could see that there are different audience segments and um, that includes people who might have recently moved to uh, Chandler area or they might have um, might be predicted to move into our boundaries here in Chandler as well. Um, we also have a variety of um, results from moms of preschool kids with families and maybe affluent moms uh, of younger children. And so again, all these things are based off of like Google searches and things that people have expressed interest in because the internet knows everything about us nowadays, thanks to cookies and, and analytics and everything in between. Um, but our top performing zip codes, they're by site activities. And so you could see right there, 85225, top performing one with about 45%, 85249 in second place, and then 85286 in third there. And so these are a breakdown of some of our Google analytics. And so this is a website overview of users that we've that have visited our website. And um, it, basically all you really need to know about this is that we had about 918,000 interactions. But what's really cool about the user count is that um, out of all those users, about 322,000 of them were new users. So again, really cool that we're spreading that message to new people. Um, and then to clarify what sessions are, sessions are basically page loads. So for the amount of people who click into a page, um, you know, they could just simply be scrolling through a page, but then an event means that maybe they downloaded something, maybe they clicked on a link. So for each of those sessions, there was about one event, either of those things, downloading things or clicking links, et cetera. And then um, all you need to know about the bottom there is that organic was our most popular um, way that people found us. And so organic is like um, ways that, you know, we didn't have to necessarily pay to target those people to find our site, their non-paid search. Um, none basically means that maybe somebody clicked on like a link in a PDF. It's basically something we couldn't track through Google. Um, and so that's why none is probably like the second result there. And referral just means that we might have been on another website that wasn't paid by us. It was just referred to by another party. Um, and so these are our Google ad stats as well. Um, and so going back to here, the difference between discovery and search, discovery, people open to new things, search, they're specifically searching for us. So you could see that we had a lot of great results there with impressions, people we reached out to who um, were through that discovery campaign specifically. And the click-through rate is about 1.73%, which is really great because tiny box at the bottom, but it says that our industry average for the CTR, kind of like what we mentioned in the executive summary, um, it's measured at a point, about 0.53%, and right here, it measured out to about 3.78% for us. So that's, that's really cool. And so here, this is also just a breakdown again of the zip codes, um, specifically for our Google ads and where they were popular. And so you could see that the most popular ones were actually the, the discovery ads up at the top here, where it says discovery retargeting and prospecting. So whether or not you were part of that either group, discovery means new people are seeing us, so that's cool. Um, and then all, at the bottom, something that's interesting to note with the zip codes, it also mentioned that the Google ads were really popular in these specific zip codes. And um, you could see 85225, 85268, and 85286. Funny enough, that middle one, definitely not a Chandler uh, zip code. So we were thinking you know, a about a bunch of different theories on it. And it might be because it could have been user error. For all you know, maybe, maybe people were searching for the wrong boundary. But it could also potentially be people who are searching out of boundary and looking into the Chandler district as well. So that, that's kind of our theory there. And then here, what we'd want you to take away from this is that um, these are some creative performances with Google ads, and you could see that um, discovery retargeting through Gmail ads <laughs> did really well. And same with any kind of responsive search, specifically with kindergarten, had quite a few clicks, quite a few interactions across the board for both of them, too. So then these are for the Facebook and Instagram stats. Um, so here, overall, we had about a million different impressions, which is really awesome, and the click-through rate about 0.31%. Uh, and so overall, again, the only thing you really need to know is that at the bottom here, it shows that Facebook, whether you're retargeting or prospecting, um, it's, it, it does really well. So um, that's why, again, we're solidifying that Facebook, if we want to put dollars and invest into something, Facebook's likely the way to go. And you could absolutely argue, well, fund all your money toward Facebook. Why would we bother with Instagram? But this is still helpful because you could always, um, you know, like figure out a new campaign to maybe draw an audience on Instagram. Because I, I've actually personally gone to a few school sites in the last few days to visit with um, people behind the social media accounts there, and a lot of them said that a lot of their young families are really um, active on Instagram too. So there is an audience. It's maybe just a matter of reevaluating what that language looks like in the visuals. 
And so these are some of our creative performances as well um, with Facebook prospecting and Facebook retargeting. And so again, the only thing you need to really know is that they, um, the prospecting campaign did really well compared to the retargeting. So again, the consistent message, we're hitting new people, that's, that's a good thing. Those are our most successful uh, campaigns, those two that you saw right there. Yeah. And then this is the Goodway group um, stats as well. So those go back to like the zip code results and those behavioral results um, that they analyzed. Uh, and so with our impressions, we had about um, 2 million uh, 500 on those. And um, what you really need to know about this is that the display contextual um, did really well. And that basically means like, um, things will show up for you on a website, um, maybe like a Chandler ad that was paid will show up on a website if the information's relevant. So something, maybe I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head, something like another educational um, school district, maybe like a site like that, or maybe like Kumon Learning Center that's education related. So maybe Chandler Unified would show up there because it's within the same topic area. So that's what display contextual means. We show up the most there. And then here with our creative performance, um, these, they had pretty low click-through rates, but at least their activities were pretty high. So there's potential there to like improve and see what we could do there as well. But those are some of the, the larger banners that we would have advertised um, throughout uh, different searches. And so this is All Points Media. That's the third party that OMA worked with to make these banners that you see here. So we had about 11 signs that were placed throughout um, Chandler. And so you could see just in tiny font, but it's there, YMCA, uh, Boys and Girls Club, ICANN, et cetera. Total of 11 signs. And each of those had about a million, uh, not each, but total, excuse me, had about um, 1 million impressions. And so there were QR codes that were on the bottom of these banners. And that's what those, where those impressions are coming from. It would lead you straight to the enrollment page if I'm, if I'm, yeah, if I'm correct on that, so. And then these are some of the recommendations that we've gotten after doing this campaign. Sure. So working again with uh, First Strategic and, and uh, off Madison Avenue, uh, their summary is opportunities evolve to assets to build upon the results of the campaign, optimize toward better results and expand our reach. Um, off Madison Avenue would walk, uh, recommend a year-round campaign that focuses on awareness at a lower uh, level during the off-seasons. We've talked about that as board members. Um, this will keep CUSD top of mind throughout the year and allow our platforms to continue to collect user data, which is important to us. This also helps capture parents moving to the area in off-season and uh, seeking information outside of the, of the enrollment time periods. Uh, during enrollment season, May and through July, um, and really it starts in January, but that's the late kick. Um, tactics would shift to, during, to driving conversions, using the data collected to retarget interested users, and using creative messaging to drive parents down the funnel to fill out an enrollment form. And there's also an opportunity for Spanish language targeting. We're really excited about this opportunity and uniquely translated creative in specific areas given the high density of Spanish speakers in our top performing zip codes. You think about 85225, and how much traction we had there. I think there's a lot of potential to explore the Spanish language area. Um, there are opportunities with Google to build on the high uh, click-through rates seen in the junior high and kindergarten audiences in search. Not a real big surprise. Parents that aren't typically shopping for a school, going from first grade to second, second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, except for last year. It was just a different year and who was open and so forth. So last year threw everything off. But generally speaking, we're gonna get preschool, kindergarten, seventh grade and then high school, or is where that interest level is. Uh, yeah, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Since the uh, junior high audience is one of the most difficult audiences for the district to reach, the high click-through rate is encouraging to know there is an interest. The lower conversion rate, however, indicates that there's more education needed for them to make decisions. And I know uh, Dr. Gilbert has some ideas of, of having the junior high schools, um, uh, what they mean, feeding into high schools, and it's a six-year decision uh, when you pick a junior high school. So we're gonna explore that this year. Uh, discovery campaigns allow us to target people who have visited a competitor's website. We, we would love to do that. Uh, OMA would recommend creating a group of ads that specifically reach parents in our district who have visited competing districts or charter schools and uh, collecting that information and doing something with it in language specifically for those audience, that audience. Uh, Facebook OMA would also recommend keeping paid social ads on Facebook platform and its audience network given the high click-through rates. The high click-through rates really indicate that the, the, the ads are really engaging. And that's why people are clicking on. They're watching the videos like you saw. And um, 
That's, that's very encouraging. Uh, there are opportunities within the platform to split targeting between different age groups. This would allow us to monitor the best performing age group on Facebook the same way we did with search and optimize accordingly. We can do ads that target digitally very young parents versus junior high and so forth. The sky's the limit what we could do. Uh, with social creative, there are opportunities that include multiple ad types to help increase engagement and click-through rates. Videos and GIFs uh, tend to be uh, have a better result due to the engaging nature of the ads. It would be a good addition to the mix of statics and carousels we're running as well. You saw the video. It's, it's very encouraging. It was one of the videos. Uh, finally, uh, we would recommend expanding partnership opportunities as a year-round campaign to support awareness. During enrollment season, tactics would uh, expand to include improved retargeting efforts with more user data collected from the site uh, throughout the year and focused zip code targeting based on results from this campaign. We can get as granular as we want to with this stuff. Uh, we also recommend collecting customer relationship management data, uh, both for current students and for students lost. This will allow our partners to reach a more accurate audience through retargeting and lookalike uh, targeting. This is especially important following the eventual loss of cookies and behavioral targeting. Cookies are going away. There's a lot of good things and a lot of bad things about our profile, but we'll be making adjustments in the upcoming years. There's an opportunity with Goodway Group to, to uh, test longer form content uh, with native placements. This is a great tactic to educate and encourage parents and could specifically support the needs of our junior high audience who are looking for more education. Now I want to talk about what we're going to move into. We're going to be, uh, uh, we started today actually, the first video went out today. We are Chandler um, and you're going to see, you're going to also see static things out there. We are Chandler, so forth. This is the first video we did. It's a little bit long at a minute 12 because this parent represents two schools. I have two children and they both attended school K through 12 in the Chandler um, Unified School District. My daughter um, attended Hamilton High School and she flourished there. Um, the thing that strikes me the most is that her freshman year she was introduced to um, the film program. Her film teacher was great and I believe he was instrumental in shaping her career and today she, um, she went on to graduate from Chapman University which is one of the top film schools in the country and she now works for Sony Pictures in the film department. And my son, who also, like I said, went K through 12, um, he went to Chandler High, and I chose Chandler High for the IB program, which is great. He did very, very well there, and he was accepted into his dream school, so he will be attending Northwestern University in the fall. So I'm very proud of where they are right now, and I, I will forever be indebted to the Chandler Unified School District. I am Chandler Unified. So that's the first of a number of videos we're putting out. Uh, Scott Hathaway and his, the rest of the team are working on those as well. Before we turn this over to Lana in two minutes, are there any questions? So when I get on the, the, so you said the Spanish language folks were pretty important. When I get on the, the website, there's no Spanish language of any sort. Would it be like really hard to get that automatically translated or run it through it a It does automatically, program? yes, the whole website. So when you, do you have to have a, like a, a cookie history of, of doing Spanish to get on to? It should be a language setting. So sometimes people might have a preferred language setting. And so because of that, they would trans, uh, translate that way. Okay. You just can't see it when you get on. Okay. I'm sure all of like most people are, are surfing. They have their computer set for Spanish, whether they're going to ESPN or 12 News or Chandler Unified or whatever else. They've got that setting already in place. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Can I butt in a minute? On, on our website, there is two in the band on the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Like it has our schools, district home, and there is a translate that you can click on that and, the, and you can pick your language on the Google site as well. If there's no other questions from the board, um, I want to thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Sam, it's great to meet you. And um, uh, we anticipate um, hearing from you folks again uh, concerning awesome. marketing. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you all, too. It was our pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Madam President, members of the board, um, Sam in, in Cornvalle is a graduate of Basha High School. Uh, so she is one of our own and, and really flourished here. Uh, 
ASU didn't want to let her go right away. Um, and so that was due to our late start of her just starting in August, um, first couple of weeks of August, and has done, has been very instrumental with the team and has really, really done a good job of evaluating where we are and moving forward and just hitting the ground running. So I want to thank Mr. Locke and his team, as well as Sam uh, as an augmented piece of our team and really working with our social media exposures uh, and expanding upon that. I think we're going to see some awesome things uh, directly sent to our families and uh, some great outcomes from that. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, thank Mr. You. Narducci. Thank you. Um, next, we have Mrs. Lana Berry. Um, she is going to hold a public hearing concerning our 2021-22 budget revision number one. Mrs. Berry. All right. Madam President, members of the board, if you'll give me just a minute, I'm going to log in so I can pull up our uh, PowerPoint. While that's loading, I can explain what we're doing tonight, and then I'll pull it up so we can go through the actual PowerPoint presentation. But ultimately, you're revising a budget very early this year. Usually, you don't revise the uh, budget, the annual expenditure budget, until December. Um, once the annual financial report from last year is completed, um, we go through all the completion reports with the state, and we, in October, fill out that annual financial report, and the board approves it. And then we revise our budget because we come together and we put the carryover amounts that are accurate, not just the projections, and we update our um, revised budget. But this year, because the state took a while um, to get out uh, the information related to the budget, and the budget session ended so soon, we ultimately revised, have to revise the budget because of the new budget numbers. And so I'm gonna go through that tonight. There is a requirement that we revise the budget by September 15th, so very different than most years. Um, and so that's what we are gonna go through tonight. So hang on just a second and I'll pull up the presentation. All right, so this will be our first annual budget revision. The next one will come on de before December 15th. Uh, usually the first meeting in December is when we'll do this, the next revision. This is for fiscal year 21-22. So the main changes that we're gonna talk about are related to the maintenance and operations budget and to the federal uh, projects budget. So like I said, the legislature ended uh, at the very, towards the end of fiscal year 2021, and we had to put a proposed budget to bring to you to approve, and then for you to adopt 14 days later in July. And so we had to use the numbers that they estimated um, from our associations and originally from the governor's proposal, and some of the house bills we knew were going through at that time period. So we use those best, based on our best estimates, and then we had to make adjustments for those numbers that came out. So today you're gonna to see changes to the maintenance operations budget and to our federal programs budget. You're gonna see additional changes in December because we only have one piece of the federal budget still left. We still have another piece um, that we should be seeing soon uh, through the governor's office. The maintenance and operations special education budget was the biggest area that was changed for us, that and our base level support. So one thing we fought for, um, Dr. Marshall did an excellent job for us. She went down to testify and helped with this was we've been fighting for special education for a number of years. And there was an additional 50,000 or $50 million that was put into special ed. We need a lot more money into special ed. The numbers have not been updated for years, for decades. And so one thing um, that we did get accomplished last year was we were able to take $50 million. Now, again, we have over 1.1 million students, and so that is divided, in a sense, over all of us. But we picked a few weights, and that was based on Dr. Marshall and a number of our directors of special education who came together and said, how can we impact schools the very most, and where would that weight go? And that this was what was determined would impact us the most. So there was an increase in specific disabilities um, from one weight to another. So if a child is in our district, they get a weight if they have a special needs. 
And some of those weights um, are, are larger than others based on the need. For example, we might need a paraprofessional, we know, with a specific um, disability. We might have other services that are, uh, are expensive. And those are uh, categorized by the need. Now, unfortunately, there was a study done in 2007 that showed we were grossly underfunded for special education. Unfortunately, nothing has been done since 2007 still um, for special education. So we know we have a problem. And, and that's been very clear. We've communicated that. Um, they are going to do a, a survey, or they are going to do a study, and the Arizona Department of Education um, is involved in that. That is going to take a while. I'm not sure if we'll have that done by the next legislative process, uh, because they're uh, going to be doing that over a period of time, but at least we got the ball rolling in that we know we need to increase special education and we know there needs to be a new study to justify what do we need to fund special education appropriately. But the weights have changed with the $50 million, and you can see those they are listed below. So what did that impact mean to us? So overall, um, we had an adjustment when you look at each of those weights in particular with the different new weights. The total for us was an increase of $1.6 million. And so for us, every year, when we look at uh, a chunk of money that's coming into us, we think, okay, we are between 3 to 4%. We get about 3 to 4% of all new money that comes into the state because with 42,000 ADM, average daily members, and you divide that into 1.1 million students, that's about 3.7%. So if you were to take $50 million, we would have gotten, we thought, approximately about $1.8 million. We got 1.6. So again, there's different weights and it's how many students are in those categories, and so that can differ a little bit. But that's pretty close when you think about $50 million and around 3.5 to 3.7%. 3 so that increase for us is $1.6 million in those categories. And again, um, we spend a lot of money on special education and regular education. And because the weights have not increased and it is more expensive to serve as those costs go up for those specific needs, unfortunately, that amount has not increased for years or for a few decades. So this is a start in helping us. It doesn't fix the problem, but it's a great start. Now, there is another piece of the budget that got updated correctly. So what happened was we estimated what the base support or the inflation amount was going to be to our base support level. Um, and we were slightly over on what our estimation was. We used uh, numbers from the Arizona Association of School Business Officials and the JLBC. But when they finalize it, they come up with the exact amount. And so we were approximately $7.64 over that overall amount that we projected. So ours was a little bit higher um, than what actually came to be. So that, when we times that, by our average daily membership, that total amount for six or seven dollars and sixty-four cents, because that was we overestimated slightly, was four hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars for us. So again, we were using estimated numbers, and now we have to use the exact numbers that the state put out. So when you add those two numbers up, they both impact the base support level. Um, our budget increase for special education was one point six million dollars. And then the budget decrease for the base support level because of the estimation of the inflation piece was $448,000. The impact to our maintenance and operations budget is $1,172,810. So that's why we're bringing that revision back to you is because we have to update those two numbers. That's important. And they, the State Department is requiring us to revise the budget by September 15th, and that's why you're seeing that uh, today. Now, the next piece that, I, that we have, we, this is not a requirement to do, but I, when I brought the adopted budget to you and we did our hearing, we uh, told you that we were going to receive GAP funding. We had been negotiating that. That was part of the package. There will be two different pieces. One has came. It came out a couple weeks ago, and it's called the Education Plus Up Grant. And that is going to be approximately $11 million for us. So of the $360 million that was negotiated, $163 million of it came out in the first piece of that. And that is what we call, have been calling, the piece of GAP funding. Um, the, the governor took his allotment. This is not, does, did not have to go to education, the $360 million, and this is a piece of that. But he ultimately utilized that for education. And so this $163 million is used, and it's, it can be used for learning loss and other academic um, needs that we have in our, in our district, especially related to COVID mitigation, all of those pieces. Now, how, how do we get there? 
Well, the reason we got there is because a lot of school districts received a lot of dollars here in, uh, in our state. We got $4.4 .4 billion came in. And you would think Chandler being three to 4% of that, we would have gotten a lot more of that. But it's actually based on poverty. Majority of that has been based on poverty. And since we have a low free and reduced lunch rate and poverty level overall, we got less than the average. We got less than majority of all school districts across the state. And so the school districts, um, there was a big discrepancy. So the ones that received less, one thing we asked for is can we get some of that additional money that came in from the federal government called gap funding. So can we take at least a certain amount, say every district should at least have this X amount of money per school district. And that, the governor and the legislature determined that that was $1,800 per pupil. We received a little over $1,500 per pupil, so that difference is not quite $300. We times that by our number of students who were uh, with us last year, our average daily membership, and we um, are going to receive $11 million. So that now we can budget for that. We can't budget for the new piece until that is published by the governor, but we have updated our budgets uh, by $11 million in the federal programs area. The overall revision, so you're going to see we have our maintenance and operations budget was $333 million so with that increase between the special education and the decrease through the base support level, that's $1.1 million. Our new MO budget is $334,286,007. Our capital stays the same. Um, on that side because there's not a, we don't get a weight in capital, so you don't receive this, uh, the increase and it's not on the base support because uh, capital did not get an increase. We haven't had an increase since the 80s for capital and so we didn't get, there's not an increase on that side. The federal programs is the update um, based on the new governor's grant for the $11,104,000. So our total aggregated budget um, increased from $415 million to approximately $427 million. And that's what you are approving tonight. So ultimately, we're asking you for approval um, to update uh, the maintenance and operations budget and the federal programs budget um, on the actual annual expenditure revision number one this evening. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you, Mrs. Berry. Um, You're welcome. Do the board members have any questions? Lena, I think you explained it very, very thoroughly. And um, obviously, these are, um, they're not a, significant number of changes um, to this particular budget. So um, I appreciate it and thank you very much. Are there any, um, since this is a public hearing, are there any questions from the audience um, concerning these budget uh, changes that we've had in the revision? All right, thank you, Mrs. Berry. Um, we, will, we will be starting our meeting at seven o'clock. <laughs>